People often talk about having a fear of something. By the end of this video, you'll know how mental health professionals talk about specific fears, otherwise known as specific phobias. My name is Dr. Park, I'm a psychologist for youth, and here at Through the Waters, we nurture youth mental health. Having fears is a common human experience, but when those fears are intense enough that they get in the way of you living your life, that's when we really get concerned about them, and that's when we would recommend that people seek out help for their fear. One of the ways that mental health professionals think about fears is based on the DSM. As I've mentioned in other videos, this is an official big book of mental health conditions used in the United States. It's one perspective on mental health, and that doesn't necessarily mean it's the right perspective, but I'm sharing this info with you in case it's validating of your own experience and in case it gives you concepts and language that are helpful. So according to the DSM, in order for someone to have a specific phobia, there are seven criteria or seven signs that would need to be present. They're A through G. So here we go, starting with A. A, the person has fear or anxiety about a specific object or situation. This could be anything really, but examples include flying, animals, needles, blood, heights, clowns, etc. B, when the person encounters that object or situation, they almost always have immediate fear or anxiety. In other words, there are not really times where they can encounter it and feel calm and be okay. C, they either actively avoid the object or situation or they endure it with intense fear or anxiety. D, the fear or anxiety is much bigger than the actual danger that the object or situation presents and for the sociocultural context. People debate this one, but to give you an example, um, like in the case of clowns, if a given clown is not dangerous, but the person interprets the situation as very dangerous, that's their fear or anxiety getting bigger than the reality of the situation. If this person has a major meltdown at a birthday party when they see a clown, while other people are happy to see the clown, and that's their sociocultural context, then that might also be out of sync with the sociocultural context that they're in. So that was D. E, the avoidance, fear, or anxiety has lasted six months or more. And we only have two more criteria to go. Are you still hanging in there with me? I know this is a technical topic, but if you're finding this video valuable so far, please don't forget to hit the like button and the subscribe button. By doing that, uh, two purposes really, you'll be notified about our future mental health tips and education, and also YouTube will be more likely to share this video with people who could really benefit from it. Okay, so here's our last two criteria for specific phobias. F, the avoidance, fear, or anxiety somehow significantly interferes with the person living their life, whether that be their relationships, school, their job, or other areas of life. And last but not least, G, the avoidance, fear, and anxiety are not better explained by a different mental health condition such as trauma, OCD, social anxiety, panic disorder, or something else. So there could be another mental health condition present, but Specific phobia is really clear and distinct, and it's not better explained by some other condition. Okay, those are the main criteria. One last note about specific phobias is that they can also have a specifier in the diagnosis, meaning like a category of the fear. The main categories in the DSM for these specific phobias are animals, like spiders, dogs, snakes, etc., natural environment, like storms, fire, water, blood injection injury, like needles, blood, medical care, injuries, situational, like elevators, planes, or enclosed spaces, or 
kind of a catch-all category called other, which would include things like choking, vomiting, clowns, and anything else really. I hope this has been validating for you to learn this language about specific phobias. If you're struggling with this and need some resources, check out the links in the description below as a starting point. We have a free list of coping tools to get you started. If you'd like to share your thoughts or experiences with a specific phobia, feel free to comment below.